Okay, um, I'm David Mackey. I'm the drivetrain leader for this year. Our goals for this year are increase the reliability of the car, reduce the cost of manufacturing, and cut the weight. Past years we've had problems with reliability and I'd like to be able to finish competition. Um, here's the model of the diff all assembled. Uh, first thing you'll notice it's different than previous years is we move the tripods onto the stub shaft coming out of the differential. Uh, this reduces us from having to cut internal splines on the rear hubs and allows us to cut a little bit of weight and change manufacturers for our parts to also cut costs. Um, here's my initial calculations uh, to decide what um, forces are going to put the most stress on my differential components. Um, this column here is the torque from the engine multiplied by the sprocket ratio. That's how much torque is applied to the sprocket by the diff versus uh, the brake torque. Uh, as you can see, the torque from the engine is significantly higher than the torque from the brakes. Um, here's the weight savings. We're running the same basic differential from Panther. Our, you can see our stub shafts cut a lot of weight because it moved the tulips onto the half shafts. Um, and the half shaft gained weight because of that reason that the tulips were added to them. But overall, still gained about a pound and a half, which it's all rotational weight, so that's going to be more beneficial. Um, here's my FE and my carriers. They're my left carrier, which is on the sprocket side. Um, what's the, one thing that's different from last year is the mounting. Um, down here, we're going to have a bolt through there into a bracket. It's going to put the bolt in double shear instead of on the previous car. Um, I tried to do a design similar to that, but it uh, was putting too much stress on the bolt hole. Here's the left carrier, or the right carrier, I'm sorry, and uh, same, same concept. Um, here's my FEA of my stub shafts. Uh, I did hand calculations. I tried to put them into SOLIDWORKS and run FEA, but I couldn't get them constrained properly. So uh, I just went ahead with hand calculations. Uh, these are all just based on the diameters and the radius in between them. Uh, you can see my lowest factor safety is uh, about 1.4, and that's the transition from here to here. Um, this is it, the lowest um, material that we would use for this. We're planning on getting material that has a yield strength twice as high as uh, heat treated 4340. So uh, these factor safeties will all go up. Now, I couldn't find a exact number for the shear strength, but from what I've read online is that it's a safe assumption to say that the shear strength is about 58% through yield strength, so that's what I went with and got these factors of safety. Um, also for this one, this is for the uh, rear spindle, so I had to include my suspension forces. Uh, looking at the different forces that act on it, the largest force was from the turning force, and so that's the one I calculated. The other forces act in different directions and didn't affect this force. Here's my stub shafts coming out of the diff. Uh, they're, the, they're the same except for the fact that this distance right here is smaller. Um, this ring right here is ordered in order to keep the shafts from going too far into the differential and meshing with the other side, which would probably cause it to blow up. Um, here's my FPA of this shaft. As you can see, my lowest is 1.39, which is in the from B to D, which is from here going this fillet going up into D. Um, again, this we made out of different materials, so we want so these factors of safety are the bare minimum material we use will have a higher factor of safety. Here is an example of my half shafts. Um, it's hard to tell, but right here there's a spring. Um, previous years we've had the plunger, a small round plunger, going into the half shaft and then it rests against a um, radius inside the tulip. Um, we, we changed the tripods we're running this year so we can't use that plunger because they're smaller. And so um, instead I've decided that we will machine the 
plastic, well, it was a plastic plunger into the end of the stub shaft, so it's made of metal. And then we can uh, insert a like a, pla a hard plastic, um, I guess, plate inside the tulip in which that arc will rest on here. And so it can pivot and plunge. Um, well, last year we've had some troubles with making sure that it had the right plunge and was plunging properly. Um, the tulip that will be on the diff side will not have the spring in it. It'll just be fixed and then as the upright travels, it'll, the tripod will be able to plunge in and out. Uh, here's the FEA of my tulips. Um, factor safety is 0.92, but again, that's because we're using a material that's weaker than the one we're actually going to be using. Um, also, my limited experience with FEA, they probably were constrained properly and leading to errors in my FEA. Um, here's the rear hubs. Um, this has them with all the suspension forces that they could possibly see all combined into one. So this is absolute, absolute worst case scenario unless you were to crash it, which in that case, shouldn't, you know, I should have designed for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see that the brake mount is uh, integrated into the rear hub. We did this this year based on, or instead of moving it to the inside of the upright, that way we can still uh, bolt the spindle to the upright and allows us, in case we had to remove it, we can simply just unbolt it instead of having to cut welds. Uh, here's my brackets for my carriers. Again, the mounting from last year wasn't going to work this year, so these are just sheet metal tabs. And it's got two bolts mounting it to the frame, and then you can see these holes will put the bolt that goes to the carrier in the shear, making it stronger. Um, my sprocket, uh, it's a similar design to last year. Um, we this year we moved to five bolts in the differential due to problems with uh, shearing bolts. From the research I've done, uh, my guess would be that we haven't been torquing them down properly due to the fact that the threaded holes in the diff are made of are aluminum. We don't want to tighten them down, tighten them down too tight and then uh, strip the threads. So uh, we're going to helicoil those holes. That way we can tighten them down to the proper, proper torque specifications and then hopefully have the shear strength that we need. So, yeah. so that's my, does anyone have any questions? Do you have a better picture of the rear hub around where like the uh, bearings were going to go and your nut and all that? Of the, like the spindle itself? Yes. Um, the hub will be mounted to this shaft, but I don't have an FEA of this because I couldn't get it to work right. Is that what you're... How's it mount? The, um, the hub will be right here and it'll be welded on. And then this length here will be threaded and we'll put a nut on the side and we'll have two tapered roller bearings. There, you tighten them down and set the preload. So is there a some sort of um, shoulder on the hub then that the very best is? Well, well, we'll put a, a washer on there. That way you can seal it up with the uh, like the Teflon ring. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But the okay. Any other questions? Why'd you pick the diff you did? Um, we wanted to use a diff that was a torque biasing differential. That way, in turns. Uh, the wheel that's moving faster, it'll bias more torque to that wheel to help it get around the corner. Or if one wheel loses traction, it'll give the torque to the wheel that is, has the most traction so your car can keep continuing to go forward. What's your torque bias? Um, initially, when you first put the dip together, it's at 3.2, uh, but after it wears in, then it will drop down to about 2.6. That can be adjusted based on uh, what type of oil you use or how you set the washers in the diff. Uh, but we will probably just keep it how it is stock. We never had any problems with it in the past. Any other questions?
What, what did you change to uh, prevent uh, the screws from backing out of the housing so that we don't have the gears grinding again? Um, uh, on the cap of it, I uh, moved the point in which the uh, head of the bolt bottoms out so the heads are a little farther out. That way we can get the holes drilled in them and the safety wire through them and it won't be so hard to throw the safety wire in there. Well, it, it still clears your mouth, right? Yeah, it all, there's significant clearance between the carrier and the ceiling bull heads. Yeah. Um, last year we had some issues manufacturing and so the, uh, uh, the multi-seal rings that we had didn't fit properly. Um, we also ran a carbon fiber sleeve, which is to not keep the tolerances that we needed it to keep in order to seal it. So this year we're going to do something a little more solid, hopefully a acrylic um, diff cover. That way we can keep the tolerances what we need. And we will make sure that the uh, grooves for the multi-seal rings will be in proper sizing. Why acrylic? So you can see on the inside of the disc. Flames <laughs> too. Any other questions? How do you plan on making the acrylic? Just um, plan on hope, just buying it, and uh, they sell acrylic uh, with a four. The, the, the diameter of this, the inside diameter of the acrylic, will have to be four inches, so it's standard size. Nothing, <coughs> be anything crazy or fancy. So you should be able to buy it off the shelf. We do. <laughs> Any other questions?